ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you know what I heard? I heard about the Karens and the Kevins of the world. They actually gave the guy the name Kevin. Shame on them. But Karens, and I just got finished watching a series of videos. I think they've been watching my videos and hearing me go off on Bard and ChatGPT because that's what they sound like. Ladies and gentlemen, some of these people who get angry, they don't think. They just react. And that reaction is going to cause a lot of problems. There is a lot of anger on this planet. A lot of anger. Please understand that I don't get angry at some stupid AI model. Lord have mercy. I don't even get angry at judges for their ignorance and stupidity. What I do is I simply use a commanding voice with them to literally control the conversation. Why? Because they think they're in charge of the conversation. But if it's a matter that concerns me, they cannot be in charge of the conversation. I control the conversation when it concerns me. If I don't want to be in control, I walk away then you can do whatever you want, say whatever you want, play however you want to play. But as long as I'm part of the conversation, I will not let you control it. That has always been the case. Now, I know some people are going to try to challenge me on that, but you can't. I've been doing this my entire life. Even the fact, okay, what I used to tell people is, especially ignorant-minded individuals, and I'm not joking when I say this, I would let them know that they are not on my level. I don't have a problem with telling people that when I speak to them, especially if they are not on my level. I know some of you think it's facetious. Some of you think it's uh, arrogant and blah, 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 blah. No, it's narcissistic. No, it is not. When you recognize where you are, you don't have to go out and shout it and scream it, but sometimes people need to know that they are not where you are that you are far beyond where they are and they need to catch up. It's okay to be ahead of everyone else. I'm not the only one. Go ahead and talk to a so-called genius or a so-called rocket scientist. Try to hold a conversation with them and see if you can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now, if you can, if you say to yourself, oh, I can, then there's something wrong with you and that rocket scientist or that genius. Okay, because that means they weren't what you said they were. I don't, it's going to take too long to explain what I just said, but let's just go this way so that you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, to tell someone that they're not on your level, I don't do it to put myself above them because I'm not above any man, but no man is above me. I have the same features as every other man on this planet. Hands, feet, a brain, eyes, teeth, mouth, nose. So nothing makes me better than them, and nothing makes them better than me. Even if they were missing a limb, even if I was missing a limb, even if there was a defect. Who's to say there's a defect? Could the one whom everybody else perceives to have the defect be the one that's actually perfect, and all the rest of us are the ones with the defect? We don't know yet. We don't know because none of us have lived 2,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago when we would have seen perfect men. So we have no idea what a perfect man looks like in our modern age. So we have no idea, so we have no reason to judge anyone. But what I used to do with people is I used to say, I will get into your mind and I will stay in your mind for the rest of this day. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you, once I get into your mind, you will never be able to get me out of your mind until this day is over. You will try all day to get me out of your mind, but you will not be able to get me out of your mind. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because once I tell you that I will be stuck in your mind for the rest of the day, I will be stuck in your mind for the rest of the day. Now, I dare anybody listening to this video to take what I just said and forget about it for the rest of the day. I dare you. As a matter of fact, I guarantee you, you will not be able to forget about the fact that I said that I will stay in your mind for the entire day until midnight. Now, you will try to convince yourself tomorrow that I wasn't in your mind, that I did not affect anything, and you would be wrong.
Because the moment you try to convince yourself tomorrow, that means I stayed in your mind for over 24 hours. And when you try to convince yourself a month from now, that means I stayed in your mind for over a month. Ladies and gentlemen, once something goes into the mind, you cannot take it out. It stays there permanently. So once I make a statement, again, we're talking about levels here. I don't play with people's mind. You can cause a lot of damage playing with people's minds. I don't do that to people anymore. I don't torture people mentally anymore. The God that I serve doesn't allow me to seek revenge that way, but I promise you, that's how I used to do. I used to stay in people's heads. I used to play with people's heads. I used to play with their psyche. I am not proud of that. What I am saying is that's what I was capable of. So I do my best not to do that anymore. And if I see somebody else doing it, I speak up. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if they have a gun in their hand. I will not allow anybody else to do that to another person. I will step up and speak up. And yes, I've gotten into trouble in the past for having done that. But I do not stand by and allow for people to manipulate other people's minds. Now, if you want to see the biggest manipulation going on right now, Russia, Ukraine, United States, Israel, Yemen, Iran, all of that is manipulation, people. Look, there is a new world government, new world order. So why do you believe that these countries are fighting against each other if there's a new world order, if there's a one world government? You don't think that these fights, these arguments are orchestrated? Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at what New World Order means. Go back and look at what One World Government means. You think they're going to start a One World Government tomorrow? What you don't understand is they've already started it. What, y'all didn't get it? They started the One World Government in 1945. When they created the United Nations, it's called the United Nations, people. God. It's called the United Nations. That means one. Unity means one. I and the Father are one. Unity, that's what the word means. They've already done the one world government. They just haven't fully implemented it. God. Sorry, you see the frustration is because most people are not seeing what's right in front of them, what's been in front of them the whole time. Remember, these idiots are patient. They will wait decades to accomplish something. They will wait decades. The eugenics program, some people call it eugenics. The eugenics program, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think that started in the 1930s and 40s? Please, they were working on eugenics in the 1800s. They've been working on it in the 1500s. They were working on it in Egypt. What do you think the Mesopotamians were doing with Alexander the Great trying to create the perfect specimen, the perfect Aryan? None of this stuff is new. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun. Getting back to the video about the Karens, I, I'm embarrassed for them. All of these individuals that people are taking videos of, calling them Karen. Ladies and gentlemen, people are saying that, now I want you to understand this. If you film somebody in public and you post it on YouTube in public, you can be sued. Why? Because you don't have a right to put someone else's image in a public forum where someone is making money. YouTube makes money off of every video. Pay attention. YouTube makes money off of every video, so now that's a commercial enterprise. Individuals who are doing that, that's, this is because the Karens don't know the law. You cannot make a profit off of someone else's image. That makes you liable. People don't know the law. The police cannot take your picture and then post it publicly. They don't have that type of permission. You are never in public. You are private. You are always private. You could never be public. Do you not understand there is no part of you that could ever be public? People keep talking about public and private. There is no part of me that could ever be public. I could never give myself to the public. 
Do you understand what the public is? There is no possibility of me giving myself to the public or giving part of me to the public. Yes, it's a figure of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are out in traffic, and this is what people don't understand about traveling up on the highways, when you're out in traffic, you have the right to go to and from as a, well, I hate the word citizen because citizen implies subject, but as a civilian, you have the right to go to and from on the highways. They can't regulate the highways like that, and there's no way in the world they can tell you you don't have a right to be on the highways. They can't say that you can only be on the highways if you do this, that, and the other, because you're a taxpayer. You pay taxes. You pay taxes when you go to the gas pump. You pay taxes when you go to the store and you buy products. You pay taxes as a taxpayer. You have a right to be on the road. They need to prove you don't have a right to be on the road. They can't say you can only be on the road if you have this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. I pay taxes. I earned the right to be on the road. Now, unless you got something that says that because as a taxpayer, I don't have a right to use the roads that I paid for. See, I paid for this road. So, of course, I'm going to use it. It's not a public road anymore. This is an ingress and a regress free passage for all individuals who pay taxes. I pay taxes. I have a right to use the road. Think about it. When was the last time you had to ask for permission to walk on the sidewalk? Hmm. Well, if you have the right to use the sidewalk, why don't you have the same right to use the roadway? What's the difference between the roadway and the sidewalk? Absolutely nothing. It's a mode of travel, means of travel. Some of you all have got to look at the law the way the law is written, not look at statutes and codes the way they're written. You had these rights from the very beginning. Just because they invented automobiles didn't change the rights because the constitutional amendments have not changed. The right to travel is the right to travel. Now, hold on now. Let's, let's rewind this tape. A commercial, pay attention to the word, commercial airline, a commercial mode of transportation. You don't have a right to that. That's why Congress gets to regulate commercial commerce. You understand that? I hope so. So, again, it's not to say that when a person says they're on a different level, that they are smarter than you, better than you, greater than you. That's not what they're saying. They're saying they simply don't think like you. It's all right to have people think different than you. It's all right to have people think more than you, better than you. Look, I think 24 hours a day. I have to take medication to stop myself from thinking. That's what I had to do this past week. I literally had to take sleeping pills. I had taken a total of four this week. Two one day, then another one a couple hours later. No, five. I've taken five. Then I took one yesterday and one the day before. Okay, I got my rest that I needed. But I have to do that. I don't have a choice. Or the thinking will keep me up day after day after day after day after day after day after day. After day and there'll be little production because... I'll be too distracted with all the thinking and all the trying to figure things out. So I just wanted to take this time and say I'm going to be a little bit more mindful of people because I see that there's a lot more anger out there. And I'm going to readjust my reaction to people, especially knowing that a lot of people are angry. A woman, one of the videos had a woman pulling a knife out on someone. She was a Karen, but she pulled a knife out on someone. Ladies and gentlemen, this ignorant world of ours, people pulling out knives and guns because they're angry. Do you not understand how backwards that is? You're only supposed to pull out knives and guns when you're trying to protect yourself. You're not supposed to pull out knives and guns when you're angry. But hold on, that's what the nations are teaching us. The United States got angry. Houthis got angry. Israel got angry. Palestine got angry. Russia got angry, Ukraine got angry, and what is the first thing they did? They didn't want to talk it out. They wanted to shoot it out. Everybody's bombing everybody. United States just killed 75 people in Yemen. 75 people in Yemen. They just killed. But you don't hear nobody crying over the Yemenis. You don't hear no backlash of the United States for killing 75 people. 
which is why Israel says it's justified for what it's doing. Anger, violence. Now the Bible does say in the book of Second Timothy three sixteen. I said 316, I'm sorry, 316, all scriptures inspired, and 17, but 3, 1 through 5, and Matthews, I believe it is the ninth verse, about the love of the greater number cooling off, and about individuals becoming fierce with anger, unreasonable, unreasonable, not able to come to any rationale, any reason, not able to be talked to. That's the time period we're living in. And both of them refer to the last days. Both of them refer to the last days. So we're living in that time period. We can sit up here and try to ignore it all we want. We can say, oh, no, I don't believe in that stuff. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a prophecy. It doesn't need you to believe in it. It's a prophecy. The prophecy is not for... Somebody did it. Well, no, no, I don't want to believe in that one. No, I know it says that that was going to happen and it happened, but I don't believe in that prophecy. Yeah, I believe in what happened, but I don't believe that it was prophesied. Yeah, I know that book was written years ago. Well, so, but, but, but that's people. Everybody's afraid to admit the truth. <sighs> above all things, above all things, to thine own self be true. Shakespeare, not the Bible. Shakespeare. Ever since I've heard that phrase, I've stuck true to that phrase. If you're not true and honest with yourself, then who are you going to be truthful and honest with? So, I am going to, as a result of being embarrassed for them, and by them, the so-called Karens of this world. I'm going to rethink how I communicate with people. I'm going to realize that every person I run into is a possible Karen or Kevin. And I'm going to avoid the conflict. I choose to avoid the conflict, ladies and gentlemen. I don't choose to run headlong into it. Now, I am going after these judges. Some of them are Karens <laughs> and Kevins. But I am going after these judges. I don't like the word Kevin. Kevin... Kevin is not, doesn't seem right. Like I said, that was my best friend's name, and I don't feel comfortable using myself personally, so I'm going to do Bob, you know, because everybody knows the movie What About Bob, you know, and Bob's your uncle. So well, I'm going to do Bob. I'm going to do Karens and Bobs, because Karens and Kevins, they just went with the Ks. So that shows you there was not much. Pay attention, people. Not much thought process went into that one. They just wanted it to be K's. That doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, as I'm trying to tell you all, our world, we're in a flux right now. Literally, there is a paradigm shift. And people are not seeing it. Eventually, no, let's do it now. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I, I want to talk to you guys about something, and I know some of you guys can handle it. We're going to go to the book of Daniel, and the book of Daniel, there is something Daniel says, I'm too far back, I need to go here, I need to go here, and Daniel, we need to go, we're going to go to the 12th chapter of Daniel, and we're going to go to verse number 4. Now, to make sure people understand, before we go on, ladies and gentlemen, during that time, Michael will stand up. We know Michael is the archangel. He says, the great prince. What is a prince? Is a prince not the person next in line to become king? How many other princes are there in heaven? Just think about it. Pay attention. This is going to take us to the other scriptures in Daniel. I, I've never clicked on it since here, but it's going to take us to the one where it says that Michael, the prince, came and helped me because he was stronger. This is Gabriel talking to Daniel. Okay. There was no one strongly supporting me in these things but Michael, your prince. He's the leader, the commander. You're going to find out that that is Jesus' name in heaven before he came to the earth 
I believe it means with us is or who is like God. Okay, who is like God? I was gonna say that first, but the there's another one, uh, Emmanuel. So, but who is like God? And who is like God? But the Christ, whose image he was in. Anyway, that's the first thing I will point out to you. Remember. It says he will stand up, the great prince, who is standing, like it said right here, in behalf of Daniel's people. And there will occur a time of distress, great tribulation, a time of distress, such as has not occurred since there came to be a nation until that time, the great tribulation. And during that time, your people will escape. Does that mean all the people who are not his people will not escape? Shh. And everyone who was found written in the book of life, ladies and gentlemen, the book of Revelation clearly points to the people who are not written in this book will not survive. And many of those asleep in the dust of the earth will wake up the resurrection, some to everlasting life and others to reproach and to everlasting contempt. That's what Jesus said in John, the fifth chapter, verse 28 and 29. Now, here is where everybody and their grandfather has misunderstood these words. And those having insight will shine as brightly as the expanse of the heavens, and those bringing the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Let's go to the King James Version of Daniel 4.12. I mean 12.4. I mean 12.3. Sorry. We're going to read uh, the next one in a minute. 4. But give me a second. We're going to go to the King James Version. This is the one where everybody reads it from. So we might as well go ahead and pull it from there. Daniel. And we're at Daniel. And we're going to go to 12th. And this is going to be the last part. I just wanted to bring this out. Because everybody talks about this great enlightenment. Oh, by the way. <laughs> they use the word firmament again. Okay. This one says heavens. The other one says heavens. We found out that firmament means expanse. Let's go on now. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now let's make sure that that is what it meant. It meant expanse or it meant heavens. So we're going to go back here. Sorry, got to go here. Then we're going to click on Rotherham. Let's click on Rotherham. I like Rotherham, y'all. Rotherham. Rotherham. Lamentation. Daniel is down. There you go, Book of Daniel. I'm not used to it being that long. The whole thing saying Book of. And we're going to go to the 12th chapter. And we're going to go verse number 3. And they who make wise shall shine like the shining of the expanse. Told you. And they who bring many to righteousness like the stars of uh, to times age abiding and beyond. Okay, now y'all know we don't speak that language like that. Y'all know we can't go there. So let's go to the American Standard Version. American Standard Version is a little bit more... Uh, akin to our daily speech not so much but enough and they that are wise shall shine as brightness uh, as the brightness of the firmament the expanse and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of forever and ever ladies and gentlemen if you notice that's exactly what the king james says and that's the problem with the american standard version it was a translation of the king james version Sorry, people don't believe that. People don't understand that. People don't know that. And that's, all, that's why it literally almost says word for word the King James says. Now we got one more. Yeah, we'll do Bryanton. We'll go Daniel, the 12th chapter, verse 3. We're clearing up something. Uh-oh, you know what? I think I know what the problem is. I knows what the problem is. Notice what it says. And the enlighteners will have the brightness like the replace, uh, replendence of the firmament. And those who make the many righteous like the stars forevermore. 
Now, what is this talking about? People call this age the age of the great enlightenment because they read this scripture and they see it talking about enlightenment. So let's do ourselves a favor so that we can understand it because it is necessary for us to understand what's being said here. So we're going to go to the 12th chapter of Daniel, which is the final chapter of Daniel, and we're going to read verse 3 and 4. And they that be wise, remember wisdom comes from the Bible, shall shine, so this is God's people, as the brightness of the firmament, the heavens, or the expanse. And they that turn many to righteousness, because they're God's servants, they're to turn many to him. Righteousness, remember he is righteousness. Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and do your research and find out that he is righteousness. So they have to be turned to him, God, as the stars forever and ever. Now, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase concerning the book. God. Ladies and gentlemen, why are there so many people not getting the context of what's being spoken? It says right here, shut up the words of the book. The knowledge shall increase concerning the book because it was shut up until that time. So it is this time of the end. See, time of the end. It is in this time of the end that this knowledge would be abundant. So this is not the age of the Aquarius. This is not the age of the Great Enlightenment, where everybody was going to, as somebody said, going to be the age of the truth and enlightenment and things being revealed. And Lord have mercy. It's talking about concerning the Bible. Okay? It's talking about Scripture. That's why he said, seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro over God's word, and knowledge shall be increased to and fro in the word, not to and fro on the streets. Sorry, sometimes I go a little bit off to speak about those things, and it's not the subject matter for which the video was intended. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, let's get back to that subject matter thing. I closed it and I shouldn't have. Let's get back to the sub 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 subject matter. I want to show you what's going on right now. And then that this is it. Then I'm going to go and finish the document. I think I am going to go lay down for a moment. I just ate. I just had me some, I, I made myself some egg fried egg sandwiches. And as a kid, I, you couldn't get me to eat a fried egg sandwich. I thought that stuff was so bland. But I had me some fried egg sandwiches just a moment ago. And I promise you, you ain't hearing me talk about no bland at all. Because, man, I took my time putting that stuff together. And that stuff tastes all right. I mean, whew. Give me one second. Oh, it wasn't. I thought it was nine, and it isn't nine. You see, it's number 12. And because of the increasing of lawlessness, the love of the greater number will grow cold. We were promised that there was going to be an increase of lawlessness. Do you not see the people playing Grand Theft Auto in real life on the streets of this wonderful nation and in others? And videotaping themselves doing it because they're geniuses. Sorry. Let's go. Let's go back and let's go. We got one more to do. And we can go here. And we can go Timothy. The T's are together. So if you ever need to find a scripture, the T's, Thessalonians, Timothy, and Titus, they're all together. All the T's are together. That's the easiest way to get to them. Second Timothy. And the third chapter, we're going to go to verse number one through cinco. But know this, that in the last days or the time of the end, 
Hold on, let's see if it shows up because it, it wants to be, it's trying to hide from me, okay? The time of the end, critical times hard to deal with will be here. Are we not dealing with critical times that are difficult to deal with? For men will be lovers of themselves, stuck on themselves, putting themselves ahead of everything and everyone else. Lovers of money. Oh, man, I just got to have a dollar dollar bill, y'all. Bling, bling. Boastful. <laughs> I'm the greatest of all times. Okay. Haughty. Yeah. <sighs> I'm the best there ever was. And you know what? I can do that better than you. Because I know that I'm better than you. Blasphemers. I don't believe in that, and I don't care about that, and you know what you can do with that, okay? That's your beliefs, and that's your God. You do whatever. Disobedient to parents. I ain't got to listen to you. Unthankful. No, nah, man. You didn't do that because you wanted to. You did that because you had to. Disloyal. Hey, no, turn around. Okay, yeah, I just got to find another spot to stab you. You don't have too many more spots back here I can stab you at. Okay. Having no natural affection. Man, them people in Palestine, them ain't people no more. They just, they rodents, they rats. They, they not people. Nah, dying, I don't care about that. Not even open to an agreement. <laughs> Man, I ain't agreeing with you no matter what you say. Slanders. Yeah, you know, he's a low down, dirty uh, man. Let me, I ain't shutting my mouth. That, that you should, you should know without self-control. I don't know what came over me. I, 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 I never, but I, and, and I'll do it again. You, you keep messing with me. Fierce. That's that anger, ladies and gentlemen. But that's a different anger. This is not just any anger. As a matter of fact, we're going to do something with this anger. Give me one second. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that real quick. We can go to the Insight book with Fierce, volume number one, because it's F, and I needs to, it don't give me F. So we're going to have to go, nope, ain't going ain't gonna to get it right here. Nope, can't do it that way. Well, because it's a single word, so it's not the word. Uh, yeah, let's do this one. Fierce. Appointed times after describing in detail the wayward course and perverted attitudes that prevail among persons living at that time, Paul confirms that these will arise, uh, for from these will arise men who slyly work their way into household and lead as their captive weak women loaded down with sin, led by various desires, always learning, yet never able to come to an accurate knowledge of the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, These appointed times, these angry times, leave people without love of goodness. Betrayers, headstrong, puffed up with pride, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. How many people out there really believe and truly believe in a God? They say they do, but their actions show that they don't. Having an appearance of godly devotion, but proving false to its power, like I said. And from these, turn away. Okay, this was the part we just read. And from these arise men who slightly work their way into household and captivate weak women, loaded down with sin, led by various desires, always learning and yet never able to come to an accurate knowledge of the truth. These are the days we're living in. Everything that I pointed out, everybody recognizes at least 90% of them. 90% of the things that are mentioned here are cognizable in our day. People say, well, they were recognized in other days too. That's right. That's that cynical side of you, but not all at once like it is today. Not all at once. Okay, what I... Give me one second. We're going we gonna to look this up because I want to get the... Do I want to do... Yeah, I'm, I'm working on something with Bard right now, y'all. Um, I told y'all I was working on that motion again, and I got most of it put together. But as you can see, Bard doesn't want to be on. Bard, like, I, I ain't talking to you right now. I got things to do, places to go, people to see, and things to know. And I'm like, okay, fine. You want to be like that, Bard? Be like that. Let's see if we can, because I don't even know why this is not showing. There's no reason for that. Let's 
you know, we got perplexity too. Look, everything is frozen. I might have to pause y'all for a second. Give me a second. We're going to go here. We're going to hit new. And we're going to put our word here. I'm going to back on up. And let's see. The term fears can be used to describe various situations and characteristics. Some common meanings are physically violent and frightening, strong and powerful, showing a strong feeling or intensity, wild or menacing appearance, fiercely active or determined, ferociously. I am so fierce. Examples of fears. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our world today. That, that's our world. That's what I've been noticing. That's what I, when I did the video, I talked about the Karens. Like I said, I love, like it says, vehement, violent, intense, overpowering, extreme, wild, brutal, cruel, dangerous, ferocious, fiery, menacing, savage, vicious, ruthless, merciless. Fail. This is not falling down. But this is causing another person to fall, whether mentally or physically. Grim, brutal, brute. That's our world. That's what I see everywhere I look. I saw two men, a video of two men on TikTok get into a fight. No, this was on YouTube. No, this was TikTok. This was TikTok because it kept repeating. So this was a, a short, YouTube short, but it was on TikTok. And one guy picks up another guy. And I, I don't know what happened at the beginning. I, I don't know who was who. But he picked the guy up, spun him around, and slammed him to the cement head first. I'm surprised he didn't break his neck with the amount of force he brought him down with because he brought him down with his body on top. When he did that, that was a power move. It was called a power slam. And when he slammed him to the ground that way and landed on top of him, he did it intentionally to put his weight on the individual to incapacitate him. The guy got up, and of course, he didn't know where he was and walked away. This is our world. And the problem is, it's only going to get worse. Now, if you guys haven't been noticing the violence, if you haven't been noticing the anger, if you are not the violent type, if you don't want to be around that ignorance, then watch where you're going. Watch where you're at. Watch the people you're around. It is necessary, highly necessary, that you guys are mindful of your surroundings. This is a wicked world, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't mean that in a form of religion. I mean this is a wicked world. There is a lot going on that should not be going on. Under no circumstances should all of this junk be going on. And it's happening. Somebody has to be pushing the buttons. Somebody has to be in control. You've heard the song. He's got the whole world in his hands. One more. Only one more because I made that comment. <sighs> Give me one second to get back here. And I got to be quick about it. Give me a second. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a second. I'll be right back. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is John, the 14th chapter, and verse 30. Jesus speaks to his disciples, his apostles, and he says, I will not speak with you much more. The ruler of this world is coming, and he has no hold on me. Everybody thinks God is the ruler of this world. God is not the ruler of this world. Satan is the ruler of this world. He's got the whole world in his hands. They were singing about Satan. They weren't singing about God. He was given temporary rulership over the earth. The same as the United States puts in temporary rulers over countries to whom they dominate, take control of, or occupy. Well, Satan was given temporary rulership over the earth. That's why these things are happening. If God was ruling this world, these things would not be happening. Most of the people would be destroyed because he wouldn't tolerate it. He's about to take over. He's about to take control, but he had to allow this. People say, how did he have to allow this? <sighs> Go and read. 
if you don't know, ask one of the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's what their that's their job is to go around and teach this to people from the Bible. That's why they study so that they can teach why these things are happening, why these are the last days. That's their job. They are witnesses of Jehovah. He's sending them out there to talk to people about his word. That's why they're called his witnesses. They witness about him. So, it probably would behoove many of you to go listen. But as I said, my job is to love my neighbors. And because I see all the Karens out there getting upset, angry, and fierce, I don't want anybody to ever say that I'm anything like that. So now I have to not only watch myself, but I also have to watch how I communicate with others because I don't want anybody perceiving that I'm angry. Okay? No, I do get angry. Don't, don't get me wrong. I am not going to take that away from myself. But the things I get angry at are not any of that stupid stuff. Especially not the stupid stuff I see. Well, what makes your anger more justified than theirs? Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. My anger is only as a result of respect. If I feel disrespected, then you will invoke my anger. Yeah, I'm working on it. But again, that's what this video is about. You see, if I'm willing to admit these things about myself, then shouldn't you be able to? I know a lot of you don't believe, but we weren't talking religion here. We're just talking facts. Those were prophecies. Daniel was written at about... Isaiah was... Isaiah was 700 BCE. Daniel was about 300 BCE. No, sorry. Sorry, apologize. Daniel is about 500 BCE because he wrote his while he was in Babylon. And Babylon was 607 to 537 BCE. So Daniel was 537 BCE. So that's 2,500 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. So how could he have been so accurate 2,500 years ago? Jesus was 2,000 years ago, and yet he was just as accurate. Of course, he was more than accurate, but he was just as accurate as Daniel in giving the prophecy. 2,500 years, and we're experiencing it 2,500 years later, 2,000 years later? Imagine that. How is it possible for them to have both predicted the same thing? Amazing! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I, this started off with me just talking about the Karen videos, but I recognize the times we're living in. I hope you do, too. And I hope you do whatever you can to stay away from these times. Ladies and gentlemen, stay away from the stupid stuff. Please stay away from the stupid stuff because people don't have any sense anymore. Like I said, they're pulling out knives, they're pulling out guns, and they're just shooting just to be shooting. And you can't talk them out of it because what happens is once they, they put it in their mind, there is no talking them down. Why? Because the moment they pulled it out, they know that, there's jail time or something coming their way. They know that you are a witness to their actions and they've watched too many TV shows where individuals kill people to keep them from testifying against them. So y'all be careful out there because this ain't the world you thought you were growing up in. And this ain't a good world for your children to grow in. And I understand why so many people have been opting out of having children these days. I get it. All right, I have to go. Y'all, take care of yourselves. Stay out of the Karen's ways because Karen ain't playing that no more. Goodbye.